So you're driving down a dark road. When you come across a tree that's laying in the middle of the road, you get out to investigate and to find a way around the tree. Before you know it, you stumble upon a mansion of some sort. And by some unknown force, you are thrown into the mansion. Only to wake up unsure of who you are, where you are, what's going on, and why you're there. All around you are reanimated skeletons, apothecaries, a lawyer of course, because in every hellscape there must be a lawyer, and other residents who seem to be just consumed with emotional damage of sorts. Welcome to the world of Paper Cut Mansion. This is a roguelike horror game where when you first start playing it, it's kind of hard to believe that it's roguelike because the game actually gives you a nice soft landing and they put you into what is called the Neo Vortex, which is an area that lets you explore a little bit. You can examine different items, you can find money, you can find keys. This dimension is more for the puzzle solvers. You're going to have to find ways past locked doors, find combinations, things of that nature. And you're only given one direction, and that is to find the talking door. So you do find the talking door, and it always turns out the same. That talking door is looking for a key. But you have to unlock other doors to find the said key. And as you talk to some of the residents, you're also notified that they would like you to do certain tasks for them. And upon completing the tasks, you're given medals. These medals will give you a stat buff that you can't take with you when you die, but is helpful for your current run. And you might ask, well, where am I going to? die. This doesn't sound like there's any enemies. There's not really in this one, but for some of the missions and some of the tasks, you're required to go to other dimensions. Not to mention when you actually finish this one and you are able to pass through the door, you'll find the gatekeeper. The gatekeeper will ask you to complete a mission for them that is almost always in a different dimension than the one you're currently in. Now, the other dimensions also offer their own trial and tribulations, but we're not there yet. Let's get back to the Neo Vortex first because you see like I said you examine different items and you're able to hold them in like a 3d aspect and turn them around look at the bottom of them and usually you find coins sometimes you'll find items then you'll also find ghosts yes yeah, like a jump scare kind of ghost will come out at you and you can't kill it you can't fight it you just have to run away from it and if you take damage you actually take damage in the neo vortex dimension it'll be indicated by like a purple lifeline that you have at the top so there's purple red and blue I'm not sure if that's the exact order. It might be purple, blue, red. But each one indicates the damage that you've taken in said dimension. So if you've taken enough damage in the purple dimension, but none in the others, you can run into the other dimensions, which are easily found. Now, if that sounds really confusing, it's not. It's really not. It's really easy to see. It's a very small map. <laughs> you can pretty much find everywhere you need to go pretty easily. And I'm one of those people that I hate <laughs> being stuck or being unable to find out where to go next. Regardless, the other dimensions also have their own problems. See, I found myself really liking the reptilian dimension, which is like the red one. Now, this one, you're given a shotgun, and you're able to shoot enemies that come at you. Now, this one is also more about violence and about taking down enemies. Usually, the talking door in this dimension will have you kill a certain amount of enemies, and a lot of different quests that you have to do is about, well, just killing enemies. The problem is with this one is it spikes very, very quickly. The first time you run through it, it's not so bad, but after you get to your next level and you find out a little bit more about yourself and discover a little bit more about this world, you're then put into a different map, but it's relatively the same. Same people, same stuff. It's just your, your surroundings are a little bit different, but what's even more different is the enemies. The enemies are a lot more difficult. To help you out, you can go to the lawyer and he will let you purchase quote unquote legal help, which actually comes in the form of these cards. And these cards are then equipment that you can either add to your head, your chest, or your arm. An arm usually being more of a weapon. The best one I would say is the bomb, but you can get a ton of different weapons. Chest can range from defense to being able to start set up a campfire somewhere to keep you warm. That is important later on. And your head has everything there again from giving you knowledge, reflexes, to actually letting you control a drone <laughs> of all things. Yes, a drone that shoots fire. You, you can get that 
that piece of equipment. Now just to take a quick step back and remind you how we got to level 2, we had to fulfill the quest of the gatekeeper in level 1, which is usually pretty easy to figure out. And then you have more gate keepers that you have to appease. And as you go further and further, the game gets really difficult, and you start to understand why it's a roguelike. But I haven't talked about one of the other dimensions. It's probably my favorite dimension. It started off as being one that I really didn't like and I hated going into, and that's the Limbrick dimension. Now this one is dark and cold. In fact, it's so cold that you're constantly taking damage. About 5 HP every second you're in there. And when you're unfamiliar with the area, you just want to run through there and you believe that you have to get in and out before you die. And that for me is just this chaotic hell that I hate. Until I realized, well, actually there is a ton of little oasises for you to hang out in. A lot of the residents are still there and they're actually standing by space heaters. Or there's uh, lamps that you can stand by as well. They'll just heal you. So it's really like getting just from point A to point B and it's really simple once you figure it out. The Limbrick Dimension actually became one of my favorites and a good place for me to kind of recoup and figure out what to do next. Now in this dimension though, aside from just constantly taking, you know, damage, your mission here, or your objective I should say, is to find your lost memories, to figure out who you were, and you can capture them by hitting the R trigger, which will dive on and capture actual memories that are trying to run away from you. Or you can find other items that will give you some information about your past. Uh, each level of difficulty as it goes down will have its own gatekeeper that you must appease. And every time you do, you find out more and more about yourself. As well as being in the Limerick dimension in general, you'll sometimes stumble upon certain items that just give you some more information. I have to say, ultimately, I absolutely love this game. It is insane how creative it is, and I wouldn't be surprised if many other devs start stealing from this idea. Because roguelikes have become so commonplace that we know exactly what to expect from them, that when they give us some Something like this, it's kind of shocking, and it's something new. It definitely shows the creativity of the team behind this game. I haven't talked about the graphics, and I haven't talked about, well, anything else, but we'll say the graphics, this game looks wonderful. Once you get used to the art style, and I really like the art style. Some people may not, but I really like it, and I feel like the characters and even the environment itself just jumps off the screen and welcomes you into this creepy, crazy world. It seems to get even weirder when you actually get down into further in the game where you'll find yourself with some really creepy creatures and, and so much about the visuals just work for this game because it's not terrifying even though it's called a horror game it's not like a complete roguelike because it's well you don't die that often you will die but not every 10-15 minutes like you do in a lot of other roguelikes again you will die quite often but it's not that and I think the art direction actually adds to that. It gives you a little bit of beauty, clarity, and creativity in an environment that is not welcoming at all, filled with animated skeletons and weird creepy creatures and literally the environment trying to kill you. <laughs> but ultimately, I think what they did with this game is amazing. This gets one of my highest ranking of a roguelikes that I've played, well, ever, honestly. Like, I haven't been drawn to a game like this, especially a roguelike, in maybe ever. And that's speaking volumes. But again, I'm one of those people who didn't absolutely fall in love with Hades. But this one, I just it, it's got me i think it meshes the worlds very well of horror game and roguelike you know roguelikes to me aren't that very aren't that scary because it's like i don't know you're supposed to die it's fast-paced combat all hell is kind of breaking loose but horror games to me are ones where you get attached to your character you get attached to the the run you're on and everything that you're kind of finding in the environment and the presence of a monster and evil being to come and take you away from it is part of the horror in horror games and i think that they do a really, really excellent job of blending those two worlds. Now, as far as performance, I never had any crashes or any lag or anything like that that became a problem. I will say the camera is kind of a pain in the butt, and there are times when you're not able to see around you because the camera doesn't turn in the way that you want it to, or it'll have a really weird angle, and, and I can definitely say like that is a problem. I also felt like there are times, especially in the reptilian uh, dimension or vortex, where you're trying to fight off enemies and you get stuck by stuff, and I understand like that's part of it but it's also incredibly frustrating when you get stuck by like a door that isn't really there that you could run through typically but for some reason while you're shooting and walking backwards you're stuck by it and you get killed 
And finally, for me, as someone who's played it as many times as I have, the game acknowledges everything that you've done even after you've died and died multiple times. You can actually check your progress in the the records, I think, or projection room, one of those places. But the thing is, is it makes you redo the same stuff over and over again. Like, the first couple levels become incredibly tedious after a while. You know exactly what you're supposed to be doing, and you know exactly what you're going to find. And I wish they didn't do that. I wish they mixed it up a little bit more. I wish they had different clues that you could find, and it, I understand after playing through the whole game, I understand why they do it that way. Uh, ultimately, it's it's a content aspect, but because the game ultimately isn't that long. It's a relatively short game, but it does kind of, I don't know, it ruins the roguelike aspect when you know it's almost just like just restarting the game from point A again, which I'm sure there's a ton of roguelikes that do that. Like I said, it becomes tedious after a little bit, but I don't really think that should take away from what the game is and what the game does. I also think that if you're interested in horror games or roguelike games or neither, like myself, you should still check this game out. And honestly, I think for the content and the quality and every other aspect of this game, it coming in at $20 is a fair price for it. So I would definitely rank this game like an 8 out of 10. A very high score. It's a very good game. And there's a lot to enjoy here. But that's just my thoughts on it. I'm curious if any of you guys have checked it out. What are your thoughts? Are you planning on getting it? Or what are your thoughts on horror roguelike games in general anyway guys i appreciate each and every one of you like always i'm wishing you health wealth and above all i hope you're truly happy because you make me happy take care everyone bye bye